water. I made one horrible bad decision. Good morning, page five in your hymnals. Holy, 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 page five. Let's all stand, shall we? Page five. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Second. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns, fall down the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which were seat want to tell you a story I was telling John it's been a while and I, I don't know it was like somebody had been working on the baptistry but all that went on since COVID and the fire and they redid a lot of things they you know changed things and had to redo things and so I didn't know about the baptistry. So everything seemed to be okay. And so we put water in it and came back the next day and all the water was gone. I'm crawling under it, looking for leaks, feeling the thing. Man, it's leaking. I went downstairs. I'm looking at the ceiling because I know that the ceiling downstairs, if it leaked, it would, you know, I'm looking in the closet. I just can't find water anywhere. 
but it's not in the tub. I call it the bath, the tub. It's not in the tub. So I pull the plug, and the, the plug was like, I don't know how you spell that, but it was like a piece of old bark. And I thought, it had to leak through there. I don't know. You know, Lord, you come on, Lord, help me with this. So I run to Dollar General. They had a pack of three stoppers for three bucks. So I put one in, and there she is. And it's warm. If we're all done and you want to take a dip, go ahead. My kids used to. Dad, what can we get? No, when they were little, not lately. Can, can we get the baptistry? I, I don't know why. I mean, it's a big bath. We couldn't get them to take a bath. All of a sudden, they want to get in the baptistry. So um, bear with us today, and it'll be, I think we have 12. Wow. 12. So, well, we put it off a couple years. And so the water, the water is especially blessed. We had to re-bless it. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that Jesus came and became our Savior. He took our sins so that we could be born again. He did not teach us how to be good. He became sin for us. Lord, I pray that he'll get the glory today in this Sunday school hour, in every class, by every teacher, by every student that listens. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you that it's so clear on everything, and if it's not clear on everything, the principle is clear. Thank you, Lord, that we can be together, that we can fellowship. Lord, be with those who can't make it today because of some reason, whatever the reason, God, be with them. And if they can be here and should be here, then put some pressure on them. And Lord, just bless the hearts of those that want to be here and can't. And for all of us, we just look forward to you showing us something that will be a help and an encouragement. Work in every heart, work in every young person. Thank you for the bus kids that rode the bus. Thank you for the bus workers. Heavenly Father, we need you. We don't always think we do, but we do. And, Lord, work in lives that are wondering, what do I do? How do I do this? What's the next step? You said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's your promise. You can't lie. You can't change. We're claiming that. Be with us. Be with us right now, please, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. It's time to recognize the birthdays and anniversaries for this week. Birthdays, Debbie Wolf, Pat Sheets, George Schaefer, Joe Satterall, Jan McGee, all have birthdays this week. Anyone else have a birthday this week? Okay, let's see. I know George is in here. I think that's it. George, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And anniversaries, I don't see any. Is there any anniversaries this week? Okay, the next song, page seven. Blessed be the name, page seven.
is our course of the month. His name is wonderful. Page 43. Romans, we are continuing the study of basic Bible doctrine, or as I put on the sheet so that you remember, these sayings of mine, Jesus said, if you keep these sayings of mine, so we need to keep these sayings, salvation, salvation, I, I, I've just got to tell you. There's so much we could read the Bible from Genesis 1 1 to 1 Vito 12 2. And Lisa, did you have a good trip? Would you move to Montana? Really? How many of you want to pay to move Lisa to Montana? <laughs> Boy, Kevin was ready. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. So teriology, the doctrine of salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other. Salvation is, is so I, you know, I'm, Going through this, we talked about the law and the blood. What's man's greatest need? Ask the world today what man. You know, the world is having a problem. Is it scary? They're having a problem with authority. Right? I mean, we're, we, are, we are suspending the First and Second Amendment. I have a word for that. <laughs> You can't do that. I mean, but there, isn't it funny that there are others that are saying, oh, well, wow, the sheriff said, we're not enforcing that. We can't enforce that. But the, the scarier part is when it comes to what God says, we'll just suspend that. What happens when they die? And they stand before the judge, and they don't like his judgment. Yeah, I don't agree with that. You know what God's going to say? This is just my version. Too bad. You had your chance, right? Rich man in hell. Hey, I need water, and you need to send something to my brothers. No, they've got mo they've got what they need. Think about it. Then they didn't have the whole, but they had what they needed then. I mean, this world's in trouble. It's sad. They think they can get away with all, you know, that governor, she thinks, that fine, go ahead, try it. But man's greatest need, obviously, obviously, is salvation. It's not freedom, it's salvation. It's not money, it's salvation. It's not education. That's not working. It's salvation. Romans 10. Have you got that? I want to read the first 13 verses. And I would like it if you had a pen because there's something that I want to show you here and it will help. You can kind of circle. I don't know what you do in your Bible. You know, I, I, I 
black pen, red pen, highlighters, just whatever helps. Write things, you know, you can define words, write things in there. Verse 1, Paul writes, he says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. We have to use Bible words. When you got saved, you didn't have anything to do with it. You just did what God said. Now, now listen very carefully, because this is happening, and it's scaring me. We're getting away from words. When a person goes to heaven, they go to heaven not because they come to Christ. They go to heaven because they get saved. They get born again. And we're getting away from that. It's like we're rewriting that. I'm not going to rewrite the scripture. You must be born again. Let's use those, those words, those terms. It's dangerous not to. You know, some people don't really care for those words. They won't care for hell either. So we need to use words. We, we need to leave that with God. I, my goal is not to make people happy. It's to make people informed. And if they get mad because I inform them, now it's their problem. Notice he says, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, verse 1, that they might be saved. Well, that's an English word. Yeah, but that's what it means in Greek. Saved. God, God is in all of this. He didn't just turn men loose and say, you know, good luck, hope you do a good job. There's a reason I read the version I read. Hey, eh? I've read all the others. Cheap, junk. Hey, eh? the Living Bible has to use cuss words. To communicate, no, no. Verse 2. He said, my brethren, record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. A zeal of God. You know what that means? They're religious. You can be religious and not saved. You, you, can, you can have a zeal for God. And not know God. Because that's what he's saying there. But not according to knowledge. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Wow. They ignore it. Are going about to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For he made him to be sin for us. You know the verse? Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Paul said to the Galatians chapter 2, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 4. I, I love this. It's very pointed. He says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So in other words, they're, they're going, but they're not going far enough. They're, they're not getting to the finish, the, the end of the law, the, the conclusion. He said, for Christ is the end of the law. Christ wasn't in the Old Testament. But he came. And the Old Testament says he's coming. So he came. So he's the end of what it said. Not the end in itself. Verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that what? Believeth. What's the law about? Keeping it. You're driving down the road. Speed limit's 55. You're going 85. The smoky, remember smoky, the smoky pulls you over. Do you realize how fast you were going? Yeah. 
you know what the speed limit is. Yes, 55. How come you weren't going 55? Oh, I believe in 55 in my heart. Doesn't that count? No, that's one law you need to keep. Christ came. Doesn't say he entered the law. He fulfilled the law. In other words, he was perfect. And he did everything you and I couldn't do. But he's the end of it. So we don't have to go back to, okay. You know, that's where in the book of Acts and the book of Galatians, you have the debate where some came in and said, uh, being saved's fine, but you still have to keep the law. You still have to be circumcised. And of course, the Bible responds, no, no, no. Verse 5, for Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But, verse, verse 6, but the righteousness which is of faith, That's why Abraham believed God. That's why he talks in Romans chapter 4 about Abraham believing God. Because Abraham was Old Testament and we think, well, you no, it's always been by faith. People didn't get saved because they killed the lamb. They got saved because they believed that the lamb of God would come one day, that God, they believed that God could take care of their problem. So now he says, but the right, verse 6, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall descend into heaven? And, and this is so classic. I mean, I love Paul's language and his pictures here. Look at the end of verse 6. That is, he, he, he kind of defines himself. He says that is to bring Christ down from above. In other words, It won't help to grab Christ out of heaven and bring him back down. And he says in verse 7, Or who shall descend into the deep? And then he explains himself again. That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. So don't reach down into hell. Don't reach down into the grave and grab him again and go, Okay, look, he, okay, okay, he did. Well, let's do it again. He said, No, he's the end. It's done. He came. He died. He was buried. He rose again. That's what that tub picture. That tub is not salvation. That's a picture. That's a wedding ring. That's a uniform. A guy puts on a cop uniform. He impersonates a cop, but he's not sworn in, not trained. He's not a cop. The uniform does not make him a cop. If they're out of uniform, they're always a cop. You and I are always a Christian. That, that, and that's a big, can you hear that buzzing? The heater's on. I want to keep the heater on at least till church. We want it, we want it warm. We baptize cold, it's terrible. I want to baptize in the lake, but you'd really have to make sure you're going to heaven. Because once you and I stepped in there, you'd be gone. Like, pull him up, can't find him. We've lost stuff in there. We cleared that land where that's all clear that the church owns. I'll get to my point. Just hang on. And they pulled trees down. And we you could stand on the shore back then. This is back probably early 90s. You could see tires, boots. I mean, just trash. It was just trash. So I called the DNR and said, I'd like to get in the water. We're just going to get in clean. No, you can't do that. You can't disturb the water. I go, but there's trash in there. Yeah, but it's already there. Just leave it. You'll cause more problems by getting in there. So I said, well, we want to baptize in there, and I'd like to clean some of it up. But no, you can't do that. Disturb the water. Finally, I said, have you ever been here on a Sunday? No. I said, you ought to come on a Sunday and see those guys in those boats throwing stuff in the water, spitting oil, spitting gas. But you don't want me in the water. Can't do that. You'll disturb the water. The economic, the e e cold, blah, 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 blah. And I go, well, okay, let's get to the bad part. He goes, what's that? I said, we're having the land cleared. 
bunch of trees are right on the water. He said, "You let me tell you something. He said, if, if, if any of that piece of equipment touches that water, we will have officers there. We will impound that equipment. I go, wow, do they know that? He goes, if they pull the permit, they better. I go, okay. I go, well, I just thought while they were there, if they're not in the water, but they take their bucket and scrape out some of the trash out of your dirty water, you can't do that. If that bucket goes in the water, we'll impound that equipment. It's like, you need a life. Whoever you are, you need a life. I go, got, got it. I go, what if a tree falls in the water? Should we leave it? Oh, you need to get that tree out of there. I said, how? He said, have that guy take that bucket and grab that tree and don't touch the water. You ever seen that water? Go down there sometime. I mean, he's acting like it's pool water. You can't even see it. You put your hand in the water, you, your hand's gone. You can't see it. It's coffee. So I go, so if, if a tree accidentally falls in the water, or two trees, he goes, what are you getting at? I said, well, I'm going to have him push trees in the water and clean out because the tree will grab all that junk as long as the equipment doesn't touch the water. And man, it, you would believe the junk that came. That tree went in, sunk down. He pulled on that thing. There were people in there. There were cars in there. There, there were houses and boats that came out when that tree. They were all, they go, what a bunch of junk. I go, thank you. I said, push another one in. <laughs> don't touch the water. Nobody's around. I don't know if they have drones or Bonnie Kelly's probably a big tattletale. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Bonnie, if you're watching. I'm kidding. <laughs> Verse 8. Got a pen? I want you to mark a couple things now. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Yet, can you just scratch a little line under mouth? And in thy heart, scratch a little line under heart. Verse 8. What saith it. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, that if thou should confess with thy mouth, underline mouth. The Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart, underline heart. That God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart, underline heart. Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, underline mouth. Confession is made unto what? Salvation. Salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich. Rich. In other words, he can save the best and the worst. He can save all of them or none of them. There's no amount he can't save. He's rich. He's got plenty. The same Lord, isn't that great? Same Lord overall is rich. Doesn't mean he's rich, he's wealthy rich. It means he, he could save them. See it? The same Lord overall is rich and all that call upon him. For whosoever, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be. Help. Chosen. No, saved. Let, let's, let's use the word. We keep changing everything. Well, the Second Amendment doesn't mean what it means. Yes, it does. I mean, quit, quit trying to change it. What's it say? You know, it's interesting that the Second Amendment is not for each other. It's against the government. But nobody's saying that. That's to keep them off our backs. And look at them. Look at them. Look, I'm just saying that's a result of resisting authority. What's the Bible say? The Bible says man's greatest need is not education, it's not money, 
not even peace. Why did Jesus come? In the story of Zacchaeus, it tells us, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Pray with me. Lord, I pray that we'll just get excited about our salvation and get excited that others can get saved. I'm excited today that so many will follow you in baptism because they've trusted you. I'm glad. I'm glad that Christ is the end of the law. And Lord, I'm, I'm asking you that we won't just look at salvation as doctrine. It is, but my goal today is to communicate it as man's greatest need. That's all. Nothing that we can understand, we understand it. For all of sin to come short, the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. We understand that. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that's our goal today, is to just see man's greatest need and that it's been met. We didn't do anything to meet it. We can't do anything to meet it. Jesus has. Thank you. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Thank you, Lord. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. First blank. Blank is man's greatest need. What is? Salvation. Salvation. They skirt all around it. They go through all the, oh, man, you know, what you really need, no, what you really need is salvation. Guy in a stretcher, Mark 2. They tear the roof up, let their buddy down through the roof because they want him to be healed. Jesus doesn't say, oh, bless your heart, can't walk, that's rough. What did he do? He saved him. He said, thy sins are forgiven thee. I love the word saved. Now listen, it's not out of date. Some things are out of date. The word saved is not out of date. It, it, it's not old-fashioned. It's biblical. I mean, don't throw it in some, I mean, some of the clothes you have are old-fashioned. This, this word is not old-fashioned. It's biblical. Can you, do you remember some of the clothes you used to wear? Huh? Purple, I had purple striped bell bottoms. Great big legs, white and purple striped. I can't believe I wore them. Huh? Shoe? Remember ties? Our daddies wore ties, you know, thick as a popsicle stick. And then wide was it. Collars, remember the big collars. Saved is always a good word. It's never, it's never out of date. I was, was in the shop one time, and barber shop, and my dad introduced me to this guy. He said, so what, what's your belief? Guy came around, what's your belief about heaven? He looked like, I think he was, I don't know what he was. He was some kind of salesman. What do you, how does a person get to heaven? I said, oh, that's easy. Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, he said, saved. That word is passe. I said, it's what? See, I'm not up on the lingo. And that was a lot of years ago. He said, passe. Nobody uses that word. Nobody knows what that word means. I said, well, the Bible knows what it means. And it's in the Bible. And, whoa, no, I'm, no, that, no, I want, you give me something modern. I said, all right, if, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. No, that, 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 
there's that passe word again. You don't have to trust Christ. You don't have to believe what he says. Hello? You can do what you want, how you want, when you want. But there's coming a day when all of us will stand before God and the thing that's going to matter more than anything else in the world is this. Are you saved or lost? Saved or lost? Not were you up on the words, were you up on the terminology. I mean, there, there's some more. I don't know what some of this stuff means. Hey? They, they, one of Gary Gilmore's sons kept using the word, he was a goat, he was a goat, he was a goat. Afterwards, Amy said, why was he calling him a goat? I said, greatest of all time. She said, I didn't know that. I said, a lot of people didn't know that, but he knew that. Do you know that? L LOL. Lots of love. I would always respond, I love you too. They said, no. You can't change that because 100 years ago, it was lots of love. Now somebody's changed that. Laugh out loud. Why don't you call me and laugh then? We're so lazy. Three things. Number one, salvation is what? Number one, it's totally free. Can't buy it. Can't afford it. It's a gift. For guilty sinners. I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. Look at verse 2 and 3. Romans 10. He said, I bear them record. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They let something good keep them from the best. How many, how many times have you done that? Half this week, gave a lady a track. She said, oh, I'm a, I go, I, that doesn't matter. I mean, if that's all you got, like God says, why should you let you in? Why should I let you in? I'm Episcopalian. You think God's going to say, spell that. It, saved or lost. Saved or lost. You don't get in because you go to church. You don't get in. Because you know the word. You get in because you know him. I'm getting in because of his righteousness. I'm not getting in because of my righteousness. Any of you sin this week? Don't raise your hand because that, that'll just set me off and I'll just go to preaching. If any, any of you sin this week, I mean, you, God didn't take you because of your righteousness. He took you because of his righteousness. Because even after we get saved, we're still unrighteous. I mean, I'm not unrighteous all the time. I mean, I, I have some righteousness, but it's not enough to get me in because the unrighteousness that I have cancels my righteousness. But Jesus never sinned. Hey, isn't that great even on the cross? The thief on the cross said, this, he's not done anything. I'm pointing like the thief pointed. Maybe he did. This guy's done nothing. And we've done nothing good. Isaiah said, for all, all our righteousness, huh? Filthy rag. Filthy rag. They let something that wasn't bad. He said they have, verse 2, a zeal for God. That sounds great. They let something that was good keep them from what's best. Baptism does not wash away your sin. And neither does sprinkling. Water doesn't wash away your sin. Somebody came up with that. We're believing it. Why don't we go to the Bible and say, what, what's the Bible say? 
So he said, what about repent and be baptized for remission of sins? It, but check other scripture. Rightly divide it. It doesn't mean God get it means repent and then get baptized. It doesn't mean repent and only. He would say that. What about the thief on the cross? You can't use one verse for an argument. It's like these guys that have an argument for eternal security. Uh, I don't know how you 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 whatever I, if we're I don't know. They're not always saying you you Baptist, but well, don't you think God wears out? I mean, he got worn out with some people in the Bible. Why would God put himself in? Why wouldn't he just send a perfect sacrifice? If Jesus is not a perfect sacrifice, then my security is not eternal. I mean, I don't really, at, at my, I don't even fuss with those guys anymore. They, I go, eh, 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 go, find, go find some Girl Scouts. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. You know, I... I believe in it. It's in the Bible. Read your Do you believe in sinless perfection? Yeah, I believe Jesus was sinlessly perfect. But nobody else is. They never will be. Well, John Wesley. John Wesley. Do you know that John Wesley was at such odds with his wife that the reason he preached like he did was to stay away from her? He wrote that in his journal. So don't give me, but John Wesley, read his journal. I have it if you want to read it. I mean, we're so good at quoting what we hear. We need to quote what we read. Well, you know what I heard? I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't care what you heard. What have you read? Well, my preacher said, eh. What's the Bible say? Salvation is free. Say, there are people going to get mad at you. They're going to, they, look, I, I love how he says, look at verse 8, the word is nigh thee. In other words, it's there. It's close enough for you to get it. Philippians chapter 3, you remember Paul bragging? Remember what Paul said about himself? Interesting. Paul said, uh, I'm at Philippians 3, verse 4. He says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh i more <laughs> he's like hey you want to compare notes i win you think you're you think you're self-righteous i more he says in verse five circumcise the eighth day of the stock of israel the tribe of benjamin a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. He was as high religiously as you could get. He said, verse 6, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is, the, is in the law, blameless. And then he writes, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. And you know he told these Romans in chapter 10 that. I mean, it's not there. But you know he said to them, look, I know what it is to have a zeal for God. And he tells the story. And they all knew him. They knew Saul of Tarsus. They knew the, they knew the stoning of Stephen. They knew his, his violence. He would make havoc and, and ransack and, and just destroy Christian churches. Now he says, Flushed it down the toilet. Doesn't mean anything. All the good things that he thought he did, what other people thought he did, was nothing but loss. Those things were keeping him from the Lord. That's why people say, when you say, like, give you something to read. Tell you how you know for sure you're going to heaven. Oh, I was baptized as a baby. I always respond, me too. But then I saw that that's not how you get into heaven. Now, look, we don't have a message that everybody wants, but we have a, a message that everybody needs. So you just tell them, smile when you say it. You get away with a lot when you smile. You know, I, I was witnessing to a gal the other day and just having a rough day, and, and uh, I, I, I shouldn't tell you what I bought. I bought 
an oatmeal pie, and a fudge round. And the fudge round was for Amy. So, you know, she wasn't very responsive, and I'm talking to her, and pretty soon um, she scans them. And I said, hey, could you do me one little favor? Yeah. Like, go home. No, I said, could you scan those again and put that on taking out the calorie mode? Looked at me, and she burst out laughing. I go, God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Listen to me. People know they have a need. They just don't know what it is. So what do they do? Go to church, have a zeal for God. I was baptized, their parents. I'd walk in the barber shop. My dad would say, this is my son the Baptist preacher. What the guys, many times, guys would say, were you baptized as a baby? i go, I was there, but I don't remember. My dad would go, yes, he was, I was there. He was baptized. Oh, they said, then you're, all, you're always going to be a Catholic. I said, do you have a scripture verse for that? Did the Pope say that? What? I mean, look, we get mad. We can laugh. They just have this need they don't know they have. The law says do, but we can't. I can't keep the law. That's what Jesus said. You, it used to be you can't murder. Uh-huh. Now you can't be mad. And all of us go, whoops. You can't keep the law. But the gospel doesn't say do. The gospel adds an N-E. D-O-N-E. Do, do you need help? You're giving me this look like a lost puppy. Done. The law says do. The gospel says done. It's done. It is, hey, Jesus said it is finished. The law demands perfection. Only Christ was perfect. Salvation is putting all our weight on Jesus. We commit ourselves completely to him. We rely on him to get us to heaven. When we sit on a chair, we're putting all our weight. We're not going, what are you doing? Well, I'm helping the chair. Chair doesn't need help. Believe, trust, rest. That's salvation. Salvation, totally free. Number two, salvation. I love, I love his terminology in verse 8. Salvation is close. The Bible says, salvation has appeared to all men. It's not without. Everyone's close to being saved. Hey, look now. This morning, you are absolutely without excuse. You know why? Because I put it in your heart and I put it in your mouth. You read the scriptures, you read a tract, you hear it preached, boom, you are now accountable. It's that close. It's so close, you have to do something with it. Mouth and heart. It's right there. Nigh. Verse 8. The word is nigh. It's right there. It's waiting on you. you he goes, you don't have to bring Jesus down from heaven. You don't have to bring Jesus up from the grave. He's risen. It's finished, John 19, 30. Salvation is not something you believe in your head. It's committing everything to him. We receive. Second point. We receive who he is. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name. Remember in Acts, the disciples got in trouble because they kept talking about Jesus. They didn't, want to, they didn't want them to talk about Jesus. You receive. Now, I, I want to point something out here. It needs to be pointed out. Verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Is Jesus and the Lord Jesus? Trick question. Are Jesus and the Lord Jesus the same? Yes. Why does he say Lord Jesus? Because he wants it all. Verse 10. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. How does that happen? Because of the Lord Jesus. For instance, let me give you a for instance. A couple gets married. Remember those? We were at Calvary yesterday for John Tendall's funeral. And that church is the church where we walked the aisle and got married. And a month later, I walked the aisle and surrendered to preach in that, that not on that carpet, but in that church right there. I was just very, very emotional. It was very emotional looking at the platform where Amy and I said, I do, uh, 112 years ago. Uh, I do. That was the aisle that I went forward and gave my life to serve the Lord. Let's say that there's a couple that gets married and after everything's done and they get in the car, they throw the rice, he goes, I can't wait till the honeymoon. She says, I'm not interested in that. I would like to go home to my mother. He says, yeah, but you married me. She goes, yeah, but I'm so used to living with mom, I just want to go live with mom. She doesn't want to change the way she's living. It isn't bad living. It's just not with her husband. She says to you, I love you. I'm your wife. I'll see you on the weekend. Hello? She says, take care of me and send your money. What kind of marriage would that be? Listen, I don't know if you're here but the people that are going to get baptized this morning, they're going to get it this morning. I just want you to know. Because the Lord doesn't just expect us to pray a prayer or get wet. A marriage that says marry me but don't expect much is the same thing as a Christian that says save me but don't expect much. I call that the, the, the watery grave. We die. When we get in that water, we die. Huh? We die to the old self and so we can walk in newness of life. Walking an aisle doesn't save you. Praying a prayer doesn't save you. It's when you trust Jesus to save you that, that you realize, verse 11, you won't be ashamed. And lastly, simple point. Salvation is what? It's abundant. He calls it in verse 12, rich. I don't believe that there's a new, and I don't want to get you involved in this. I don't want to be involved in it. But it's coming up. So I think I'm going to, if I get thrown into it, I want to be ready. I'm not ready. But I know what the Bible says. People are not predestined for hell. There's a new movement that says, doesn't matter who you tell, God's going to save the ones he wants saved. So it, it doesn't do any. It doesn't make any difference if I witness people or not. That, that's hellish. People doesn't, they don't say, don't witness to him. He, I've already marked him off. He's going to hell. That, that's, that's utter garbage. You say, but there's some smart guys teaching that. Yeah, Paul was pretty smart. Huh? And he saw, man, was I wrong? He counted that all lost. If you call on the name of the Lord, he'll save you. Whosoever. Whosoever. So let's be careful that we don't just look busy for God and not know him. Nobody is so good that they don't need to be saved. And nobody is so bad that they cannot be saved. Man's greatest need is salvation. Religion is not enough. Religion. Christ, verse 4, Christ is the end of the law. Christ. Christ. Not us, that I'm good. You're, you're not good? Stop it. I mean, sometimes it's hard to laugh when somebody tells, so, tell them, you know, the officer is nothing right. Oh, that bad. 
you know, it, it's harder, stay with me, it's harder to get lost than it is to get saved. Some of us, I, I struggled for six months getting lost. I just didn't think, you know, I had all my, I was an altar boy, I was sprinkled as a baby. My grandfather, listen to me, my grandfather lived across the street from the church. Now you say that's silly. It wasn't silly to me when I was lost. Did you hear me? It wasn't silly when I was doing all that I, I wanted to do, could do, thought I had to do to get into heaven. That made perfect sense to me. But now we think, man, that's crazy. It is crazy. Just be patient with people. Just, just share with them, Here, here's what the Bible. I thought that too. Here's what the Bible says. Heavenly Father, bless our day. Work in hearts. Make it helpful, meaningful. Make it stirring, God, to those who are baptized. Make it stirring to those who are not baptized. Make it stirring to those who are baptized that just realize what it's all about. Work in our hearts today. That, that's what we need. Through your word, through your word, through the, through the, the, the word will be in the music. Use it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.